Hello, this is Dr. Krause with a quick video on how to use an Arduino to read an incremental encoder. Um, first of all, uh, this is actually sort of a second part to a video I made a while back. If you're not familiar with how incremental encoders work, I would strongly recommend you take four minutes and watch this thing. Uh, basically, that's going to tell you how encoders work. Um, incremental encoders are going to generate two square waves and uh, the encoder should be incremented or decremented on each edge of those two square waves. You could do rising and falling edges on both channels for maximum resolution. Um, in this video, we're just going to talk about rising A edges, but we refer to the encoder signals as channel A and channel B, and the phase between them, or which one is going first, which one is leading, tells you the direction of rotation. So if you've never looked at encoder signals on an oscilloscope, I strongly recommend you take a minute and watch that video. Uh, so big ideas here, I'm trying to set you up with kind of a skeleton of code that you would then go complete in order to make an Arduino correctly read a differential encoder, incremental encoder in both rotational directions. So I'm going to define a global variable encoder count and that variable is going to get incremented or decremented every time there's an interrupt and for our purposes we're just going to look at rising edges of the encoder A channel um, and there's going to be a function that will be called every time there's a rising A edge. That function is called an interrupt service routine or ISR and the job of the ISR is to determine whether we're going to take encoder count and increment it using a plus plus or decrement using a minus minus in C. So here is a, a fake generated version of two encoder signals, but for illustrative purposes, these will work. So the blue line is the square wave that we're going to call channel A, and it's going up and down as its little disk is. So it's, an encoder is essentially a bunch of lines on a disk, and those lines are either black. Um, or white or reflective or whatever and so there's a photo transmitter receiver um, though the disk could also be clear depending on how the disks are made so somehow there's a, a light that's being a beam of light that's being transmitted and then sometimes received and sometimes broken and that's causing this square wave so you've got like a transparent part or a reflective part and then an opaque part or a non-reflective part that are causing these signals. So the A channel is this blue channel, the dashed orange channel is the B channel, and this would show A leading B, or A going first, um, which might be considered positive rotation. That's a little bit arbitrary. But like I said, we're going to have the, the Arduino respond on the rising A edges, so there's two of those, and because A is going first, A goes high and B is still low because B switches at a later point in time. So the job of your ISR would be to say, okay, an A rising edge just happened. I know that happened because that's the only time that this ISR is called. I'm going to look at the state of B. If B is still low, then B hasn't risen yet and A is going first, and I would call this a positive situation, and so I would increment my encoder count. In the opposite scenario, going the opposite direction, we now have uh, still the same blue line is A, this dashed orange line is B, but now when the rising A edge happens, B is already high, which means B went before A, so B is leading A, so these would be two negative clicks of my encoder, and so on both of these vertical red arrows, the rising A edges, I would decrement my encoder count um, in my ISR. So this is what it looks like if B leads, and this is the situation when the ISR is called. The ISR doesn't know anything about other points in time, it only knows the rising A just happened, and so it would have to read the state of B to determine, am I in this situation where B is leading A, or am I back in this situation where A is leading B? So keep those two pictures in your head as you're trying to write an ISR that recognizes the difference between those two scenarios. Okay, so that's kind of the conceptual background. Let's talk a little bit more about the code, and then I'll show you my code. Um, so you're going to need to define an A and a B pin that you're going to connect those encoder signals to. Um, in Arduino Uno, 
Um, now this doesn't have to be, this can be modified if you're using a different version of the Arduino, but the Arduino Uno only has two pin interrupts. They are interrupts zero and one, but they are connected to pins two and three. So if you have a robot like my students are making and you have two different wheels and you're going to have two different encoders, you can only have one pin interrupt per side of your robot for the left and the right. So we're going to hook up encoder A for the left wheel to pin two and encoder A for the right wheel to pin three. So for just the encoder on the left, which we're talking about here, I'm going to connect pin A or encoder A to pin two and then encoder B could essentially be anything. Um, those are going to have to be set as inputs in my setup function and then depending on the design of the encoder, I may also need to turn on the Arduino's pull-up resistors for the pins that I'm connected to. So you'd have to look into the details of how your encoder works to know whether or not you need to do that. And so if you define a pin as an input, but then also say digital write pin to high, that would turn on a pull-up resistor for pin two. I then also in my setup function need to attach the interrupt zero to the rising edge. Um, so I'd say attach interrupt zero, which says pin two, the name of my function, and then I want to do a rising edge. And so there's an attach interrupt. You could look that up on uh, the Arduino documentation website. And then I'm going to define my function do encoder L. I'm going to have an encoder on the left and an encoder on the right for my two different wheels of my robot. You can use any name. And then in my loop function, I'm just going to print my encoder count uh, as a way to verify that this thing is working. Um, you would probably want to somehow command your motor to turn in one direction for a half a second or something and then stop and then turn the other direction for half a second and verify that your encoder count is going up and down by printing it to the serial monitor. So I created a GitHub repository uh, for tips regarding the Robosaki project and underneath there um, is a folder called encoders and in there is the starter code that I want to talk about now. So if you were to follow this link, you would end up here. So this is my Robosaki tips in, uh, repository. I may add other tips later, but if you go into the encoders folder, um, there'll be a link to this presentation if you want to flip through the slides again, or this link would take you to the code. Um, I'm going to talk about it using this editor just because it makes it a little bit bigger. Um, so like I mentioned, step one, and again, this code, um, it might compile, but it's not actually going to do anything. Um, so it's not intended to be the solution. It's just enough to get you started so that you can work on the solution. So the first thing I would need to do is define my two encoder pins. As I mentioned, pin A must be connected, or sorry, channel A must be connected to pin two. Uh, channel B could be anything. I'm choosing 11. Maybe you're already using 11. Um, you pick any pin that you would like. I'm defining a global variable called encoder count and I'm initializing it to zero. Then in my setup function, um, I'm starting my serial. Um, you can use any baud rate that you like. If you like going slower and have lots of patience, you could do something less. I'm a big fan of 115.200. Um, I'm defining my two encoder pins to be inputs. Um, as I mentioned in the other earlier part of the video, you may need to turn on pull-up resistors and if you uncommented this code, it would do that. And then I'm attaching interrupt zero to the function do encoder L, and we're going to do that on rising edges. Um, interrupt zero is pin two, interrupt one is pin three, and you'll need that one to do the encoder on the other wheel if that's what you're doing. And then you'll need to write your own do encoder function, figure out what you need to do in here to either increment or decrement the global variable encoder count. Um, and part of why that has to be a global variable is that interrupts can't have interrupt service routines can't have inputs or outputs. So we're setting this um, global variable so that we can access it everywhere else. And then in my loop, you would, like I said, need to probably modify this so that it causes the motor to move. I'm just printing out the encoder count. Um, actually, now that I see this, I would probably also want to have a delay of something. 
Um, so it's not just printing the same thing out so fast I can't read it. Um, so cause the motor to move, print out the encoder count, delay for at least a few milliseconds, repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, so hopefully that's enough to get you started. And if you're in one of my sections, uh, come ask me if you've got questions. If you're watching this and you're in another section of 107, go ask your instructor or come to some of the common office hours or go to the um, Students Success Center or whatever. Um, thanks.